Hello Cyborgs and welcome to a book review. Today's book review is Phoenix by Emily Lube Key, aka Julian Greystoke here on booktube. So I read this on my Kindle. This is Digitus. He's still hiding, still camera shy. Emily kindly contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in reading her novella, novel, her currently published work, and offered to send me a free PDF of it because it is currently, I believe, only available on ebook. I'm going to put Digitus down and then superimpose, oh magic, the cover for this for the rest of the video. Phoenix was written in 2009 and it is a self-published novel and it is not professionally edited. And unfortunately, I could see that in the copy I have, but mind, I'm not sure if it was just the copy I have or the copy that's available to order on Amazon's Kindle store because she gave me a PDF, which then I used like a janky internet program to turn into a Mobi file for my Kindle. So it could have been a translation error that mucked up with like the formatting and some of the typos. I don't know, but just be aware. But all of those formatting and typo issues, and there weren't a lot, maybe just like a dozen, they didn't impair my enjoyment or comprehension of the story at all. But I just wanted to put it out there for full disclosure purposes. But I've totally gotten ahead of myself and forgot to tell you what Phoenix is about. So this is a kind of novella length. It took me like three hours to read on my Kindle, and I'm not a very fast reader, but there's no like actual pages. So a YA novella about a zombie apocalypse, and then in the aftermath, what these group of friends and teenagers or soon to be friends or never going to be friends have to cope with. Our main character is Deirdre, a 15 year old who's got knobby knees and short hair and likes to wear fireman boots. She meets up in this crowd of fleeing high schoolers with Moth, this goth boy with bright green expressive eyes who very rarely smiles, and then also comes back into contact with Andy, her former best friend from childhood who just kind of abandoned her when he became popular in high school. You meet a bunch of other different characters. I could name all of them because they are so individual and interesting, but before we get any further, book haiku! When the sleepers wake, grab a bludgeon, grab a friend, and run for your life. So as I said, this book follows Deirdre as she has to cope with the zombie apocalypse, zombie outbreak. I'm not quite sure if it's an apocalypse, but it's certainly like a disaster sort of situation. The zombie mythology is really interesting in here. They're referred to as sleepers. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it is a like contagion sort of concept with the zombie mythology, but I found it really interesting. I'm not a big zombie lover. I haven't consumed a lot of zombie pop culture. So I'm fairly new to the zombie mythology, but I really liked this. So this is pretty fast paced. It almost had like a thriller aspect to it. I found myself like nervously like tapping my hands or like just getting tense because, you know, that like you're running from zombies, you know, and you're trying to survive. And it's, you know, it's not a happy fun time that these characters are going through, but it wasn't relentless, which is good. Like you got character development, you had conversations, and you got to understand the psychology of Deirdre. You get action scenes in between the character development and discussing what this would actually be like. And that's the main thing that I want to get across with Phoenix is this is a really realistic portrayal of how I think young adults and children would deal with this disaster sort of situation in a small town. There's violence and gore, but it's not a like particularly violent and gore story. It's just like, you're killing zombies. People are dying. There's going to be blood. And people die. People that you're rooting for die. And I really appreciated that. Really had a great balance between it not being too bleak, but not being too happy, rainbow, sunshine, unrealistic world either. I think she just really fit the balance really well of what this whole scenario would actually look like. As I said, with the characters, there's a bunch that you meet up with and they were all different. They were all given a good amount of attention, each of them. I never got them mixed up, even though there are quite a number of characters for such a short length book. Deirdre's a really introspective character. You know, while she's dealing with this, this disaster in her life and having her whole worldview being turned topsy-turvy, she's still thinking things through. Like, am I supposed to be feeling like this? Why am I feeling like this? She also exhibits some like PTSD signs or 
least some post-traumatic signs. She stops being able to cry and she feels empty inside and she has nightmares. She was a strong enough character to where she wouldn't just like break apart during the scenario, but nor was she someone who was like trained to deal with this sort of awful situation. So it was just, it fit really well with her character. There's also a dog character in here. So if you're a fan of Burmese mountain dogs, then I think you'll get a kick out of the dog sidekick. And that was a really lovely like relief sort of thing in this book. The dog becomes this source of normalcy and a source of comfort, especially for the really young kids who are having to deal with this. And so every time like they would cuddle up with this dog to try to calm themselves down, you as a reader would do the same thing. You would just be like, okay, we're safe. The dog is fine. It is a short book. So you don't get like a huge resolution to this disaster. It's more of just like a character development story. It's, it's really about the people. It like the zombies provide the disaster and it's an interesting disaster, but it's about how these young people and kids are dealing with this situation. And so that's really the important thing. And though it is, it ends with you not having all of your questions, not having the disaster resolved. I think it ends really well. You're satisfied with what's been given to you. So overall, I gave this a four out of five stars because I did really enjoy this. It was also a really well-timed palette cleanser between East of Eden, which is my new favorite book of all time. And so what could follow that up and not pale in comparison and leading up to me trying to tackle the Poisonwood Bible, which is also going to be kind of intense. So this was a lot of fun, action filled, really well written characters, a quick read, I just really, really enjoyed it. So if you were interested in checking out Phoenix, I would certainly be very pleased if you did because it's not well known at all. And I think that Emily Lubke and her writing as well as her booktube channel under Julian Greystoke really deserve more attention because it's well done, snarky, thoughtful, and really honest. And I think that that is an important aspect to both writing and filmmaking. So I will link all the things down below. Please let me know if you are in fact interested in picking up Phoenix after this review, or you could tell me what your plan or role would be in the upcoming zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse, that's fine. They can be zombies now. Thank, thank, thank you for watching. And until next time, continue to be lovely. And don't get caught in an apocalypse. Fingers crossed.